Welcome back, everyone, to Colgate. Dave Ryan alongside Evan Washburn, former captain, star defenseman at Delaware. What do you look forward to most in half number two? Well, I want to see which team is going to assert their style. We've seen a tale of two quarters, really. There was the transition for Colgate. But Lehigh also showed the ability to play in transition, the attack dominance for Lehigh, and then the face-off wins for Colgate. So which team in this third, fourth quarter is going to play their brand of lacrosse? Let's recap the first 30 minutes of lacrosse. What a start it was for Lehigh, a 5-0 lead into the second quarter before Colgate stormed back. Lehigh showed the ability to play Colgate style of transition. The goals from the long sticks, Souders, great ground ball, this was an odd man rush. They were down a man, and Souders just decided to take it the entire way. And then it was the attack for Lehigh. Di Maria and Fantoni, both two and one. Two goals, one assist. They're winning their individual matchups. Colgate has got to make an adjustment. Slide quick to the two attackmen. And Johns Hopkins, big question. Are they a championship contender this year or not? I think Johns Hopkins is, but the margin of error is very small. They have to stick to fundamentals. They lack a difference maker, a game changer. So it's truly a team effort for this team to return to championship weekend. So let's get right to it, Evan. Keys to the game. What are you looking for tonight? Colgate head to head with Bucknell. Both teams have very distinct and different styles. For Bucknell, it's their well-oiled defense. And when it's on, they're funneling players to a certain area and collapsing on them. But when it's broken up and one player breaks down, there are huge holes in the defense. And it was no more apparent than last Friday night when they allowed Peter Baum to get the game winner. It really is. Peter DeLuca, the keeper for Jacksonville, is on his game today. And what wows me is his athleticism in the cage. He's very active. He explodes to the ball. He takes a high arc. And what I mean by that is he's right at that crease level, cuts down the angle for shooters. We mentioned this is coming off a turnover for Bucknell. Ryan Walsh, strong left-handed tendencies, but he's showing the ability to put it in his right hand. And this is a mismatch and a perfectly placed shot. First thing you do as a defenseman after a goal and at a faceoff is you call out who has point on the fast break. And for the Bison, no one picks up the ball. Jackson Place hesitates, and this happened last week. Colgate in transition will test the cage. The Bison have to slide to a man when he's dodging in transition. It's been a big weekend for Dante Fantoni. Five points versus Army Friday night. And one of the things about Fantoni, he's not going to blow by you with speed, but he has great field awareness. He understands where he is when he's dodging, and he uses a defenseman's momentum against him. Perfect inside roll and finish. Most difficult time for a defense is when you're adjusting from being man down to all even. It leaves holes and Taylor takes advantage. You can see the miscommunication. And Di Maria sees the opening and Taylor does the rest. It's truly what separates Di Maria and Fantoni. They're recognizing what the defense is doing. I mentioned they're sliding quicker to them now. It's a step down slide, so that leaves Hess wide open. And he's much more reserved with his celebration after this goal. Wow, the Canadian connection. Brandon Ben from Ontario finds Zach Palmer, a fellow Ontario native, with the wraparound finish. These guys grew up playing the box game inside, so they're great at playing in small spaces. What Coach Murphy tells us this week, Dave, that the long sticks had practiced some shooting this week. And that is just beautiful. As a former defenseman, you always like to see your fellow long stick put one in the cage. And this is what happens with a 10-man. You leave yourself vulnerable. Two-man game. Di Maria, if we stop it here, is going to set up a two-man game with Fantoni's over here. If we roll it. Stop it here. we got Fantoni here. It's a pick and roll. It's like a basketball play. He's going to roll off. And he'll get the advantage off of this play. Roll it. And that's all Fantoni needs for that extra step to greatness and a goal. Chemistry is always the word when you think of Di Maria and Fantoni. For seniors to step up and take that on the chin and make a change says so much. And for this defense to swallow its pride, because as a defenseman, I'll tell you, you don't really like being slid to. Your sense of pride is that you're going to shut down a man and no one's coming to you, you're out on an island. But in this defense, there's a slide coming whether you're beat or you're not. 
because it's all about creating havoc within an offense. I can't fault the strategy, but a lot of talk around college lacrosse at the moment is implementing the shot clock. We see that professional lacrosse, it creates offense, it keeps teams from doing what Ohio State is doing right now. It's just a product of the rules currently, but just to give you guys an idea, this is something that a lot of people are unhappy with, that offenses can just sit back and watch the clock tick away. And there's really nothing Denver can do except put themselves in an incredibly vulnerable position by bringing their goalie out of the cage and causing double teams. The biggest upset in college across this season. Hopkins, sixth team in the country. They were number one in the country three weeks ago. We talked about it in the open. Expectations for this Blue Jays team were championship weekend or bust. And today on this field, they haven't looked like a team that should be in that 16-team field. Take a look at the eye box. Hopkins creating mismatches, bringing Palmer out as a midfielder. He finds Ben, the Blue Jays' best finisher. Fakes high, goes high. Wickham seeing it the entire way. He matches his stick with Ben's stick and doesn't fall for any of the fakes. Great play of angles from both Kearns, number 43, the Army defenseman, and Palmerian Cage, forcing Hall into a situation where he has little net to shoot for. Palmieri hugging that pipe, making the save, making the outlet pass. Look at the eye box. Unfortunate play for Bucknell. Poor man up offense. One pass and a shot. Dave, you mentioned it high to high. Madison will eat that shot up all day long. 